Oh, good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. I seem to have misplaced my body. So while I go about digging up a new one, why don't you enjoy the latest installment of the Curator's Crypt? This is a portrait of Edgar Allan Poe's mother, Eliza, the famous actress. Did he inherit his madness from her? Or did her unbridled passions lead him to the very brink of insanity? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. But there were theories that because she was an actress, that that's why Poe acted the way he did. In fact, just a year after his death, the Phrenological Journal, a journal that studied the shape of people's skulls and how it influenced their behavior, blamed Poe's mother's choice of a career as an actress on Poe's mental health, stating that Poe had inherited from his mother that unearthly intensity and ethereality which her profession as an actress awakened. Just 10 years later, the British psychiatrist, Henry Maudsley, just assuming Poe is mentally ill, which hasn't been proven, also blamed Poe's mother's ungovernable passions for his melancholia. That was what they called depression back then. And said that, quote, before the child is born, it is certain that his after constitution may be seriously affected by his mother's state of mind. So her being an actress actually tainted Poe in the womb. According to Maudsley, Poe having born, been born the son of an actress was thus born under a canopy of remorse and imbibed as his first lesson the melancholy dirge of never, nevermore. Very dramatic stuff. There's even a theory being spread that as a kid, Poe used to watch his mother on stage, that she played Juliet over and over again, seven days a week, and the little Edgar didn't understand that his mother really wasn't dying up there. He couldn't reconcile that the mother he saw die on stage would visit him immediately after the performance. Once again, ridiculous. We know exactly what Poe's mother performed and she wasn't playing Juliet over and over again. In fact, he probably wouldn't even have seen her play it. And how do we know what Poe's mother performed? Well, she was a famous actress. We just have to look to the newspapers and we have plenty of bound volumes going back to 1806, 1807. Other institutions have even earlier ones. This is the Boston Gazette from 1806 through 1807. We also have over here copies of the Columbian Sentinel. And when we look up close, we can see advertisements listing Poe's mother in the different parts she played. And we know more about those parts because we actually have some of the scripts from the plays in which she and her husband performed. Look at this. This is The Foundling of the Forest. And we can see in the cast here, this is from... 1809, and there's Mrs. Poe in the part of Rosabelle. But what's more than that, we have reviews of the plays in which Poe's parents performed. So we just have to look through here. This is an 1806 or 1807 volume of the Polyanthus, a little Boston periodical, and Poe's mother performed a lot in Boston. And a little bit farther back here, we have the March 1807 issue. And 
and some unkind words about Poe's father, who's playing the part of Barnwell. From Mr. Poe's Barnwell, we expected little satisfaction. And of course, we're not disappointed. But then down at the bottom of the page, we have Little Pickle. It's from a play called The Spoiled Child about this little boy called Little Pickle. His father's name is Pickle, and his aunt's name is Miss Pickle. So it's the Pickle family, and Little Pickle's this rotten little boy. At one point, the family thinks they're eating pheasant, but he's actually murdered their parrot and served it to them. And this was a big hit for Mrs. Poe. This is one of her most famous parts. And she was playing this when she was nine years old. But now she's 20 years old. And just a few months earlier, she's given birth to Edgar's older brother, Henry. So imagine this 20-year-old woman playing the part of little nine-year-old boy. And the reviewer says, Little Pickle by Mrs. Poe, if we may be allowed to use a pun was very green little pickle. That must have been hilarious back then to say that. So we have a lot of information about the different places that Poe's mother performed, the different parts she performed, the audience reception. I wonder if we can actually visit one of those places that Poe's mother performed. Well, the last place Poe's mother ever performed was right here in Richmond at the Richmond Theater back in 1811. We've got a picture of it right here. Unfortunately, you can tell from the picture, there's a problem. It's on fire. The theater actually burned down just a couple weeks after Poe's mother died, so we can't visit it. But there is one other place here in town that she did visit. It's only a couple blocks from the museum at the Richmond Randolph Lodge, which at the time was one of the largest buildings in town and we can go to the very room in which she performed. But before we go, I'm gonna to have to put on my coat and scarf because it's a little bit chilly outside. Absolutely not because we filmed the following part back in January. This is the oldest uh, Masonic Lodge building in continuous use in the United States. So uh, when this build, this build, this room that we're in was the first completed uh, area of the lodge. Uh, the lodge was built from 1785 to 1787, but by one year we were able to have our meetings. And this room, even though it seems moderate by contemporary standards, in 1811 was one of the largest meeting rooms in Richmond, particularly for the uh, for the for the Shaco and Churchill area. So this room would have been used for not only lodge meetings and dinners, but uh, ballroom dances, literally wedding receptions for our mitzvahs. And Masons are, um, are very committed to widows and orphans. So it was not unusual, not just for our lodge brothers, if, uh, if one of them died for us to contribute to their relief, but for someone in general, and Eliza being one of the best known citizens of Richmond, uh, the members of Richmond Randolph, uh, number 19, allowed her to have a benefit concert in this room and raise money for her medical bills. So that would have been pretty much where we, you and I are standing right now. So that was done, again, because of that, we've always had a relief fund. So she would have come here, as you know, she would have sang, done scenes from her plays and read poetry, probably walked around the room. It probably would have been set, although aside from the tables, but with the kind of benches that we have here would have been authentic to that period. So people would have sat in this room and watched her from the spirit, probably with the uh, warmth of the, uh, the uh, fireplaces, which would have been used in that area. And all the money that was raised would have gone to pay for the, uh, the medical bills. As I understand that it, it was called consumption in those days, and we would now call it tuberculosis. And as we know, by the end of that year, she had passed. And it's very, not very far from her. We're only about, uh, about four or so blocks from St. John's Church. 
to where she is, uh, where her remains now are interred. I guess one of the curiosities maybe you know is whether Edgar himself would have been here as a child. It, it certainly wouldn't have been unusual for him, you know, to him to have been sitting here with an auntie or, or someone, and it's very possible that he was here in the building at that time. Well, it certainly was a chilly June afternoon out there. But before we conclude our curious script on Poe's mother, why don't we take a look at what Poe said about her? And this is a guy who grew up being made fun of, being picked upon by other kids who thought they were better than Poe because his mother was an actress. But as an adult, he wrote that no earl was ever more proud of his earldom than I was to be the son of such a talented woman. In fact, once writing to one of his mentors, Nathaniel Beverly Tucker, at 26 years old, Poe wrote to him, in speaking to my mother, you have touched a string to which my heart fully responds. To have known her, is to be an object of great interest in my eyes. I never knew her. I have never knew the affection of a father. Both died, as you may remember, within a few weeks of each other. I have many occasional dealings with adversity, but the one to parental affection has been the heaviest of my trials. So on that note, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this week's installment of The Curator's Crypt. Despite my best efforts, I remain unsuccessful in locating a new body. I just can't seem to find one fresh enough, and this will never do. But if you'd like the freshest episodes of the Curator's Crypt before anyone else has a chance to see them. Be sure to support the Poe Museum at patreon.com slash poemuseum.